Libby, I appreciate your time. You are coming to us live from Busselton. What is the situation there on the ground? Uh, it certainly is. It's an, a watch and act, and uh, there are many uh, residents, locals, uh, but also a large number of holiday makers who are impacted and, and certainly watching uh, the fire and those scenes. Uh, that you're bringing forward just now uh, very closely and, and obviously watching closely the emergency WA website for further details. It's my understanding 65 families have registered with the local um, community centre. Most of those families are holiday makers, given that this area that has been affected, uh, the 200 hectares, but also the surrounding area uh, does include a lot of uh, holiday homes. Uh, firefighters, up to uh, 150 firefighters, DFES crew, many volunteers work the night to save uh, the Wise Winery uh, restaurant ground and on also the uh, business alongside that meal up. Uh, beat meal up farmhouse and they are working very hard to contain the fire as well. As a local resident, I uh, woke up at, at 3.30 this morning and uh, had actually packed my car with, with belongings, um, implementing the uh, our own bushfire plan. Uh, it, it's um, been, uh, it certainly has put a lot of people on edge. Do we know yet if the fires have caused much damage to property so far? Is it too early to tell? It is too early to tell. Um, the feedback that I have had so far from one of the firefighters who's been on the scene this morning is that, uh, that our homes at this stage have been saved and there has been um, no threat to life. Uh, once again, volunteers working alongside those volunteers working for SES with DFES and Parks and Wildlife have been doing an outstanding job uh, all throughout the night to save lives and property. Uh, but this is uh, a very pristine area of uh, the Mill Up Regional Park and it is devastating to see these scenes unfold. And what are we hearing from authorities about the expectation as to how the fire's likely to progress, how the weather conditions are looking over the coming days? Uh, my understanding is that the weather conditions proposed for today are favourable. Uh, they will be uh, undertaking, the, the, there's a lot of work being undertaken. There will be a community meeting this afternoon at, at two o'clock at Geograph uh, Leisure Centre and we will have an update. But uh, the whole community is watching uh, the weather forecast very closely, as well as the emergency WA app as well. Uh, this is the fourth fire over the summer period that has been experienced in this Capes region. We know that uh, it is a high uh, fire risk area. Uh, and uh, while these fires are frequent and, and very fierce, uh, it is always uh, something that puts this community at edge, on edge, uh, given the obvious devastation and, and potential de devastation as well. Mm, absolutely. Our thoughts with everyone being impacted by that at the moment. Libby, while I have you, I'm keen to get your take on some political issues. You are also the Shadow Health Minister in WA. What is your view about whether or not WA should be reopening its borders on February 5th as planned, considering the Omicron experience we're seeing around the rest of the country? Well, my understanding with the Omicron experience that we're seeing around the rest of the country is that when we're looking at uh, those ICU presentations that overwhelmingly uh, they are Delta or the unvaccinated. Uh, the date of February 5 is based on a very high vaccination rate for Western Australia. While we have lagged other states, uh, it is anticipated that the over 12s will be uh, over the 90% uh, target uh, vaccination uh, rate for WA and uh, with Omicron uh, not being uh, presented heavily in our hospital system, uh, it, there, there is certainly 
um, an expectation that the Premier will open the WA border on February 5, as promised. We are seeing some health experts arguing that the reopening should be delayed to allow more children, for example, to be vaccinated before COVID arrives in earnest in WA to potentially avoid some schooling disruptions. Are you taking that advice seriously? Uh, look, there are some arguments about to what extent the McGowan government have used the, get, the gift of time that they have been given. Uh, it's fair to say there's arguably no government in the world on the planet that has had more time to prepare for uh, COVID than the McGowan government. Uh, but uh, there are also uh, real questions of what will be achieved if the um, border is extended further. As I stated, we do have high vaccination rates. Um, there, we are seeing the beginning of the rollout for um, those, uh, the, the children over five starting yesterday and, and it has been, uh, there has been a very good take up of that roll up. And, and we also are aware that um, this is uh, a, a virus that overwhelmingly um, impacts uh, the older population as well. Uh, given the high vaccination rates here in WA, which we certainly will um, meet um, by the 5th of February and, and these good take up rates as well, uh, we've no reason to expect that uh, the Premier will go back on um, the promise to reopen on that February 5 date. Libby Metham, the Deputy Liberal Leader in WA. Appreciate you joining us. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you.